Hi there. Now, in this question, we're told then that a company sells seeds and claims that 55% of its pea seeds germinate. And to test the company's claim, a random sample of 220 pea seeds was planted. And in part C, we've got to state the hypothesis for a two-tailed test of the company's claim. So what would that be? Well, if we just put part C here, that claim is going to be that the null hypothesis is going to be that the proportion that germinate is going to be 55%. So that would be 0.55. And the alternative hypothesis would be, because we're told it's to be a two-tailed test, would mean that the proportion would be not equal to. Okay, not equal to because it's a two-tailed test, 0.55. And so that's part C then. So we'll move on now to the next part, part D. And we're told that given that 135 of the 220 pea seeds germinated, we've got to use a normal approximation to test at the 5% level of significance whether or not the company's claim is justified. Now, there's quite a lot of work uh, on this, and it's going to be a bit of a squeeze. So. Uh, do bear with me on this. First of all though, for part D, what I'd want to do is write down what a random variable is. Let's say we let x be a random variable. We need to describe the distribution we've got here. So let x be the random variable in the usual way, just RV for short, and it's going to be the number of seeds which germinate. So just put that in there. Number of seeds, we'll say germinating. And what kind of distribution can we expect from this? Well, it's got to be a binomial distribution. We've got a finite number of trials here, 220. If we assume that there's the events occur at random, independently, we know there's two outcomes. You either get success of a seed germinating or not. So we can say where x is distributed as a binomial distribution, n for the number of trials would be 220. Now, the proportion that germinate, we're just going to say is p here, just in general. So that's our distribution at the moment. Now, it says use a normal approximation to this particular distribution. Um, we know that we can use a normal approximation. We don't have to justify it here, but I'll just show you anyway as a reminder. And that is that the number of trials times the proportion p has to be greater than 5. And the same with n times q, the probability of failure, that has to be greater than 5. So if you work out mp, that is 220 times p, which if we assume then that the null hypothesis is true, is 0.55, then that comes to 121. And that's greater than 5. We also have to test nq. And nq would be 220 times 0.45 and that comes out to 99 which is greater than 5. So we can say because of this that under the null hypothesis under H0 there we can say that the distribution of X is roughly then let's say we introduce a new random variable Y which is normally distributed. Now, the mean is always going to be n times p, so that's going to be 121. We'll just put np above here, okay, for that one. For the variance, remember, it's npq. npq is the variance of a binomial distribution. So we need to work that out. And if you do NP, which is 121, multiplied by Q, 0.45, what you get is 54.45. So we've got our 
approximate random variable y. Okay, so we've approximated the distribution of x to a normal distribution. So when it comes to working out our significance test here, let's just put down what the significance level is. We've got, we'll call it alpha, okay? So this is not part C, part C ended here, okay? The significance level is 5%. What we're doing is a two-tailed test. So I'll just put that in there, two-tailed test. And we've got an observed value, which we'll call x, and it was 135. Now, 135 is greater than the mean. So the mean, remember, was 121. So this value here is to the right of the mean. So we need to just be considering the upper tail. So what I'm looking at is the probability of a random variable x being greater than or equal to 135. I'm going to test out in two ways really here. I'll show you both ways. I'm going to test out to see whether this probability is less than 0.025. If it is, that 0.025 remember is just half of the 5%, 2.5%. If this probability turns out to be less than 0.025, I'll know it's in the critical region. And I would know that I can reject the null hypothesis in favour of the alternative hypothesis. Or I could work out what the critical value is. Okay, I'll show you, as I say, both methods here. So probability that x is greater than 135, greater than or equal to 135, I should say, given that we're assuming the null hypothesis is true. That is that p equals 0.55. And that's going to lead on to working with this approximation here. So I can say then that this is approximately the same as working out the probability that y is greater than, and we've got to take care here because remember we're approximating a discrete probability distribution, the binomial, to a continuous one, the normal. So we've got to apply a continuity correction here. And I always have to think about this, okay? I think of this, and I've demonstrated this in earlier tutorials about continuity corrections, how they work. So if you're unsure of this, do check check it out on my tutorials but uh, we've got say 135 here and we think of a box of unit width here this side is 134.5 this side here is 135.5 and we've got part of our normal distribution coming through here like so and what we want is the area to the right of 135 so that's going to be the area here, which will give us the probability, areas representing the probability, remember. But we must include the 135, greater than or equal to 135. So we go right into this box here, right up to this edge here. And so this edge here is at 134.5. So working this out, this is the same as y is greater than 134.5 using that continuity correction. And in the usual way then, we work out the standard z, standardized z value, and that would be the probability that z is greater than the observed value, which is 134.5, minus the mean, which we've seen is 121, and that's all divided by the standard deviation square root of the variance there, 54, the root of 54.45. Now, if you work this out, this then turns out to be the probability that z is greater than 1.8295. Now, you could stop at this point if you want, because 
1.8295. When we compare that, if we were to look at the standardized normal distribution, okay, let's just draw a sketch here. Let's imagine then that's the standardized normal distribution, Z. And if we take the upper tail at 2.5%, let's just put a line down there and shade that area in there. If that is 2.5%, just put that in there, 2.5% or 0.025, then this value here is 1.96. That's our critical value, 1.96. Notice that the Z value that we've got here is 1.8295, which is clearly to the left of this is not in the critical region. So at this point here you could say that the standardized Z value is 1.8295 which is less than 1.96 so therefore not in the critical region, not significant and therefore we can accept the null hypothesis that the company's claim is justified. So that's one way working with critical values or we can just carry on from here using our tables or the calculator. If you're using the tables, you'll most probably have to do 1 minus the Z value for 1.8295. And that turns out to be 0 0.9664. And that comes to 0 0.0336, which as a probability then is greater than the 0.025 to 2.5%. So again, this will tell us that it's not in the critical region. And therefore, we can summarize, and that is that we can accept the null hypothesis, or that it's not significant, or it's not in the critical region. Any one of those statements will do. And so therefore, the company's claim is justified. So I hope that's given you some idea on how we can go about handling that. Okay?